Molly's telling me that we're selling a lot of these mic checking kits right now. We've got 2750 on them in our store. Most major bee supply catalogs will carry them. So, um, yeah, I think they're really, I think they're necessary for mite treatments. I always suggest people do a check before and then a check after. Kind of get a yeah, it's idea. really good to make sure that whatever treatment you did actually worked. That's a mistake a lot of people make. I've made it myself several times, like with that apivar right there that you're standing beside. Yeah. Uh, about four years ago, we spent $18,000 on apivar treatments for our bees and just assumed it had been working. And then in September, we could see that our, we actually saw mites on bees in September. So we started doing some mite checks just to find out that our mite numbers had gone through the roof. So it's really helpful to uh, check after you treat, not just before you treat. I'm always really honest with our customers about these because of that. Because, yeah. you know, like I don't want to tell them to buy something that's not going to work. So I do tell them about that. I'm very honest and they yeah. appreciate that. But... Um, well, you know, the message on this stuff is, is it does have an effect, but it's like a flat line. It keeps, I, it, for the most part, what we're seeing is that it keeps the mite loads from going up yeah, quickly, yeah. but it's not bringing the mite loads down. Well, another thing I've noticed is I've had so many people come in here and, you know, they put Apivar strips in a year ago and they're still there. Yeah. Oh, no. And yeah. that's really bad. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a fast track for resistance right yeah. there. Yeah, yep, and I hear that all the time, so. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. some people just don't think. Mm -hmm. So right now we're carrying Formic Pro, yeah. which uh, under heavy demand, uh, just kept getting asked for it over and over and over, so we're carrying that. We're ca carrying Apivar, because some people definitely want it. Yes, they do. And then we're carrying oxalic acid and... Uh, Oxavap brand vaporizers, and we got Apigard. So uh, so far, the Formic Pro has been selling really well. Has it? Yeah, I think people are a little scared about the temperature range and stuff right now because it's so flip floppy here. Well, you know, and cold. that's a legit concern too because Apigard's the same way. You know, the Apigard and Formic Pro are very sensitive to heat, and you got to understand how it works and use it correctly or you can fry a colony real quick. Yeah, I always try to tell people that too because I know didn't one year you have like a bad... I did, yeah, two yeah. years. I had real bad experience with Formic Pro. Yeah. Um, now that I understand it better, I think I could do much better. I haven't used it in a long time, but now that I understand the mode of operation, I'm sure we could do better with it. But, I you know, we're, we're having really good luck with Apigard. I've been using it off and on for 20 years, so... Yes, you know, that so. is definitely Bob's go-to. Yeah, so we buy it in these tubs. I do hope that I get to see you try some Formic Pro, though, Bob. You, you want me to try Formic Pro? I just want to <laughs> see what all the rave is about. <laughs> okay. But you're good stuff, so. Well, I'm getting away from the chemicals, period. Um, I like the organic acids because they leave no residue in the comb, zero. Mm -hmm. They're organic, of course. Um, they don't contaminate the environment. As long as you understand how they work, I think they're great. Now, this is just my personal choice. I don't mean to tell other people what they have to do, but we're not going to use Apivar anymore. It's really the only chemical that we stock, and we simply stock it because people want it, yeah. want it all the yes. time. So. Yep, and I'm very honest with them, too. So. Well, that's the way to be. Yep. Molly is slowly, actually quickly, turning into an expert on all this stuff. <laughs> you got any questions, call the store and ask for Molly. Yep. The other girls know about the bee equipment, but Molly's becoming the expert. I love bees. <laughs> she loves bees. <laughs> I just can't learn enough. <laughs>
We carry one of these kits in each truck. This one's for the black truck, which is the truck I drive most of the time. Got one in the brown truck. And it's a simple kit. We have an easy, they're called Varroa Easy Check. Let's see, you got one, let's see the label on that. Varroa Easy Check. Uh, most these supply outfits have them. They're not too expensive, we carry them. Real simple device. It's just a plastic tub with a perforated basket inside. And it's simple to use, um, no big deal. We like to use alcohol. I know a lot of people are using um, windshield washer fluid, um, soapy water. And we like to use alcohol in water. Maybe a little more expensive, but I feel it's easier to use and does a pretty good job. Each kit has a bottle of alcohol, a half cup measuring cup. Uh, uh, if you get that pretty level, you've got real close to 300 bees, just give or take a few. We've actually literally counted them to make sure that that works, and it does. And then just some paper towels for cleaning up the mess. And then a Tupperware tub that we're going to dump bees into. And Jesse will show us how we do that. I'm going to fill the container up halfway with liquid. Now 50% alcohol and 50% water works good and we do that a lot too. We just happen to have plenty of alcohol here and no water so 50-50 um, with water works too. Now let's hold that up so it won't make it crystal clear. See if we can see the level. About halfway works pretty good. And there's two lines in that basket. One is for 200 and one is for 300. We go for the 300. It takes about two frames into the container there uh, to get uh, a good sample. Uh, we've uh, got a colony over here that we're using as a queen bank, so we're going to try to show two concepts here the queen bank and the easy check. So, notice that with the frame there it's kind of got a little bit of space there and that's because of the uh, the thickness of the cages in there but I've got two frames of brood in there I try to keep open brood next to it one on each side and we've modified a, a frame to fit the cell bar and as you can see, they're all over the all over the queens. Just a couple little blocks of wood to create a space for one of these JZBZ uh, bars. These are the same bars that come in a queen shipping box or a queen bank shipper. And uh, we always have a few extra queens around for us, for our own use. Each week we collect a bunch of queens, anywhere from 100, 150, and we'll sell some of them and use some of them. And it's Saturday morning, nobody's working over the weekend, so rather than keeping them in the box overnight, we've chosen to put them in the queen bank. And this bank is always queenless, but it always has fresh brood going in it too, so we're always adding young bees. And one of the keys to success here is uh, young bees. They'll take really good care of those queens. You can see that they're growing cone. Yeah, we got just a little bit of a nectar flow going on, so they're they're happy. that's emerging. That's actually the perfect frame. Having open brood on it means there should be a good dominant number of nurse bees on it, which is actually, my understanding, is actually the bees you want to test because the mites understand. The mites that have hatched 
out of other cells kind of hang out in the brood area waiting for the perfect opportunity to enter another cell just before it's going to be capped. So they know to hang out on the nurse bees. So if you're going to test for mites, that's the best place to do it is to take bees from the open brood. He used a frame of seal brood there because that's all we have in that colony. I'll shake all the bees down in the corner there. Got a piece of pine straw in there. And then that's about 300. Go ahead and get your bees in there quickly. And they are dead instantly. And while those that's happening there, I go ahead and try to get the bees back into the colony and get the colony buttoned up. You can do this with a queen right colony by having the, the frame of queens over an excluder as long as it's a good colony, but we, we feel it's safer in a queenless colony. I've done them both ways. <clears throat> when, I, when I roll this, you can actually hear the barrel spinning inside there. I'm gently rolling it, but the wash is actually going through the the hole is pretty, pretty good. You're supposed to do this for a minute. A lot of racket out here on Saturday morning. Pretty soon the girls running the retail store will show up, get ready to open up. On a Saturday, usually we get busy about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, a little later than normal. And so far, we look pretty clean. We did an apigard treatment back in March. I have a video showing us doing that to kind of keep swarming under control. And uh, I think that that March apigard treatment has really given us a leg up on the mite situation. I've kind of changed my attitude about uh, mite treatments. I no longer want to treat to bring my mite numbers down. I want to treat so my mite numbers never get high. If you get high mite numbers and the bees start to get viruses and things from high mite numbers, it really takes a while to get them clean and bring them back into shape as much as six weeks, actually. You might kill the mites quickly, but all of that garbage that uh, is vectored by the mites takes a while to get rid of. You got one. You got one. Okay. Two. Two. Okay. We did a couple mite rolls in this yard just to see where we stand and we got one mite in one and zero in the other. So I think we're doing pretty good. Still seeing just one? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm not in a panic about mites at the moment. Anyway, this, uh, this yard is full of dark red honey, which suits me just fine, that tulip popper. And we just put escapes on. And we'll see, today is Wednesday, so we'll probably come back Monday, Monday and get them.
Heck yeah, bro. Go yeah. get it. Go get it, everybody, Molly. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to How old are you, South? How old are you? 24. How old are you, John? 41. 41. Oh, wow. Yeah, my oh, man. Nigel. Oh, man. Okay, so I'm going to Who's first? John. Uh, John and Seth. Oh, okay. Thank you. 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 Th